Akalari is not an evil creature that's out to get you and to make your life worse. A calorie is a unit of energy. In fact, it's about the amount of energy that you would need to heat one gram of water through one Celsius. And all it takes is a Google search to see dozens of articles, all with conflicting standpoints on whether or not counting calories is a good thing, or it's a bad thing, or it's good for fat loss, or it's the worst thing you could ever do for your mental health. Some people are prone to becoming obsessed with things or addicted to things, and they like to rule themselves out of calorie counting very early because they're worried it's just something that's going to take over their life. And that's understandable. So what is it we're actually saying when we say count calories? Well, let's think of something completely different, such as a tire on your car, for instance. When it comes to pumping up the right amount of air in that tire, you don't guess. You don't give it a kick and go, oh yeah, feels all right. You would like to find out the exact amount it needs because there are repercussions of not putting enough air in the tire, and there are also severe repercussions of putting too much in the tire. And when it comes to counting calories for fat loss, it's important to maybe see it like the fuel tank on the car. If you put too much fuel in the car and it spills out, that's a representation of consuming too much food and gaining fat. But then if you were to not put enough fuel in your car for the amount of activities you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, over time, that amount of fuel would dwindle down to the point that your gauge would start to reduce over time, and that's what fat loss is. Another way to look at it is that calories are the finances of the fitness world. If you were to put too much money in the bank for the amount you were spending, you would gain credit in the bank. That represents fat. And fat isn't a bad thing. It's a protective mechanism that's kept us alive for hundreds of thousands of years. That's what we do when we put money in the bank. We're putting it there. We don't need it now. We want it later. So if we were to look to reverse that process to elicit fat loss, we'd want to make sure that we're spending a bit more and maybe earning a bit less. So the first question that's probably come into your mind is how many calories do I need to burn a day and where do they burn? Well, before we get into that, let me just explain to you how we determine the amount of calories you would need for your goal. Online calculators ask you your age, how tall you are, and how much you weigh. This gives them a general understanding of how big you are. Then most calculators ask you how active you are, whether sedentary, lightly active, or moderately active. That then mathematically times is your BMR by a certain figure, whether it's 1.2 or 1.4, and it gives you a ballpark figure of the amount of calories that are estimated that you burn on a day. And right now I could point you to the link that I'll put in the comments with a calorie calculator that explains exactly the amount of calories you would need for your goal, but don't. Because unless you're well-versed in macronutrients and the role that they play in fat loss and muscle growth, then I'll highly recommend that you watch this video where I explain the biggest mistakes people are still making to this day when they first start tracking calories and using macronutrients to their advantage for losing fat and gaining muscle. And this video will change the way that you do this forever. 